Once again, I thank you for stopping by to check out this episode of Vintage Audio Review. And guess what I'm going to talk about in this episode? The realistic Mach 2 loudspeaker. But before I get into that, I just wanted to give a little channel update, I guess. And the big thing is that thanks to you guys, I've hit a thousand subscribers and have a minimum amount of viewing hours so that the channel can be monetized. Now, it, with the amount of subscribers I have and all that, it, it's not going to really amount to much. It's just kind of a nice way to for you guys to say thank you for putting together these videos. And it's it's not something I will make really that much money on. I think maybe at this point it might be you know, 75 cents a day, but over a year that adds up. I could buy a six pack of beer or maybe some speaker cable or something. But anyway, I do appreciate the support that you've given me and just hope that the channel continues to grow. As I said in the very first video, this is like a hobby for me. And now that I'm retired, I can spend time doing it. It's opened up a whole bunch of new audio friends, I call them, who have turned out to be more than audio friends to me. And it's just a good community. People that like talking audio, like cars or sports or all that, they, they like to talk about it. And I've, I've learned a lot and I do appreciate you guys asking me questions. Sometimes I, I don't have answers for them, but anyway, I do appreciate that in the comments that you leave. So I thank you and let's just hope the channel continues to grow. So in 1985, Realistic or Radio Shack listed these in their catalog at a price of $220 or about $650 as of October 2023. And that was per pair. They're kind of a heavy loudspeaker at about 46 pounds a piece. They're a three-way ported speaker and they do feature a 15-inch woofer, a 5-inch mid-range, and a 4-inch butt cheek tweeter, we'll call it. So they do have level controls to tweak the mid-range and the tweeter responses a bit. They're also rated at 160 watts maximum power capability. I should point out that the mid-range and the tweeter are ferrofluid filled. Say that three times quickly. And that helps disperse the heat in the drivers when they're going. So that helps to their, their power handling capability. Now, they were rated at a SPL level or efficiency of 94 dB at one watt and one meter away, and they are an eight ohm speaker. I did my own measurements on all that, and you'll see that later. And that's at least what they said they were rated at some almost 20 years ago, I would say. Now, as far as I know, these are all original except for the surrounds on the 15 inch woofers. My buddy Ian refoamed these and wanted me to check them out, see what, how they sounded and measured and all that. So I thought they definitely are vintage and it would be kind of fun to do. Now, when we get into the speaker measurements, at least for the SPLs, I don't have the ideal room. There's some suck outs in it. So I try to do all my speaker measurements in the same spot so you can kind of compare them to say the Klipsch KG2, which would be kind of a similar speaker and it kind of just gives you a reference for the sound pressure levels compared to maybe another speaker that you're familiar with. I'm going to give you a little close-up view of the controls here and then how the speakers are connected in the back. They do have the kind of, you know, push in the button and then slide the wire in kind of connectors on these speakers. Other than that, they're fairly big. I believe they're 27 inches tall by maybe 17 inches across by 12 inches deep, something like that. They do have the grills with them. This one I have the grill off just so you can kind of see it. So that's kind of a, a little tour of them and then I'll go into the measurements and then I'll tell you about how I thought they sounded.
This plot shows the impedance of both of the realistic Mach 2 loudspeakers. Now the high and mid-range controls were set to flat on both of them. And the nice thing is that both of the impedances follow one another very closely. They're off a little bit here at about oh, 1200 hertz, 1150 hertz. The maximum impedance looks to be around 20 ohms here, and the minimum impedance is around 5 ohms. At several points along the graph, it is at 8 ohms, but the important thing is that it never goes below 5 ohms, and that's only for a little area here, and then uh, right in this area here, it's maybe 6 or 7 ohms. So an 8 ohm rating is probably reasonable for this speaker. This just shows the impedance, both the phase and the magnitude portion. So it's basically what we saw in the previous graph. Plus, this red curve is just the phase response. And it's only for one loudspeaker. The controls are set to flat, and it's just kind of there for reference. This plot is just for one loudspeaker, and it's showing the effect on the impedance when you change the tone controls. Uh, the blue line would be flat, as you saw in a previous graph. And it kind of just shows that the impedance does change a little bit, particularly at about 30 hertz. You can see it changing when you turn on the uh, high frequency filter or boost to max. And so it tends to increase the impedance. Once again, the impedance never gets below 5 ohms. And you can see for the most part that varying the mid-range or treble controls doesn't really uh, do much to the impedance other than right in this area here. Here we have the frequency response sound pressure levels of the Mach 2 loudspeakers. I have both of them shown and what's nice is they kind of line up and follow one another which is really good. Right here this little area right in in this area right here that little suck out is more due to my room response. Now the sound pressure level at one meter at one watt it said was 94 dB. Well, that would be up around here where this line is. So you can see that we have very little sound pressure level that is 94 dB or better. However, once you look at this area here, it's, it's kind of uh, reasonable with the high end of the band from maybe 2K up. It's kind of, it's, I wouldn't call it flat, but it's, it's pretty even response. It's not falling off at the high end of the band. So it, it kind of looks okay. There is a response here, a little suck out here. And once again, that could be my room, but we'll compare that to another speaker in just a moment. The other thing that I should note is the covers were off when I did the measurements. As far as where I have my microphone, which is one meter away, the speaker is placed in the same spot where I do all my speaker measurements, but the microphone was in line with the tweeter in the mid-range center. So if you look at the speaker, you will see that the mid-range and the tweeters are off. They're not right down the center on top of the woofer or in line with the woofer, I should say. They're off to the left. So the microphone was uh, in line with those. So it was kind of placed in between the tweeter and the mid-range right down the center. That's kind of where the measurements were taken. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring up my clips KG2 that I had measured previously just to let you see how that compares and that so there's the clips KG2 and it still has this suck out in this area about oh, 35 hertz we'll call it it's not nearly as bad as these guys which is kind of surprising since they have that big woofer and it also has a higher uh, response at the high end it's maybe a little bit smoother too so it kind of just gives you let me highlight that it kind of just gives you an idea as to what the Klipsch KG2 looks like compared to the Mach 2s so right now we're going to see what difference having the uh, grills on the speakers make so right here we have the cover on and here it's off so you would expect some attenuation of the high frequencies possibly and you see that just a little bit let me go ahead and, and put the uh, highlight the cover off and i'm sorry this is with the cover on and you can see that there's not a lot of difference between the two maybe it attenuates it uh, like right here it's attenuated versus here but that's kind of the difference between having the cover on or off 
once again, we're going to look at what effect the uh, high filter makes. So let me go ahead and turn on the one with the high filter. So here we have the high filter set for high. The cover is off. So that's with it on high. And you can see that its high end response is higher than when it is set to flat. So the high filter is now on the low setting and it attenuated the high filter. And I'll just bring the high filter on so you can see that too. So that's with the high filter on and off. So you can kind of see the effect of that control for the high filter. Now we have the mid-range control. And here is the mid-range on high. And let's highlight that. So it's maybe a little different, not uh, not a lot different with the mid-range set to high. And if you have the mid-range set to low, that is our response. So when it's set to low, it let me highlight it. So it definitely has more of a pronounced effect when you set that mid-range control to low. There's not as much of an effect when it is set to high, which would be. So that's with the mid-range control set to high. So it tweaks it a little bit from the normal one, but there's not a lot of change with it set to high between normal. And then when you put the low on, it does attenuate the mid-range. For my listening tests, I basically removed my Klipsch KG2 loudspeakers and connected up the Mach 2 speakers in their place. The amplifier that I use, actually an integrated amplifier, is the Project One Mark XX, which has its own episode. That guy is rated at about 45 watts a channel into 8 ohms, and the music source that I use was my little Surfans music player, which does a really good job. I listen to a variety of music and I should point out the covers or the grills were off both speakers and I did play around with the controls here. I ended up settling for a position that was halfway between flat and high for both the treble and mid range. Although to be honest, I moved them around and I didn't notice much of an effect. So for the most part, I thought the speakers did a really good job. They're not a speaker that I would use for critical listening. But overall, they do a pretty good job of filling a large space with decent sounding sound. The imaging wasn't anything spectacular. I didn't really try to optimize the toe in or toe out or my position to the speakers and their distance. But overall, I thought the imaging was kind of, you know, it wasn't really anything spectacular. And the sound lacks a little of that high end detail, I would call it. I mean, there's high end, but it just kind of like it's missing a little something out of it. They're more of a nice, warm sounding speaker. You do get a lot of the lower bass and I would say the efficiency is decent on these. My amp recommendation or receiver would be something between oh, 25 to 60 watts would be really good on these if you're not going to be playing them really loud for a party music, in which case you'd want a little bit more power, but they, they sounded really loud without my Project One integrated amp getting much over probably about 25 watts for this kind of room that I'm in there. And the Project One is kind of up in the corner. It's that shiny silver faced uh, piece of gear that you can see kind of behind me. Anyway, I thought they did a pretty good job overall. If you have a, a basement, maybe uh, a workroom, work, workshop, garage that you want to fill with really uh, good sound. This guy is your man. And if you have a Radio Shack system you're putting together, definitely if you found one of these, it would be a good addition. Just make sure to check out that the woofers are intact or you're going to have to have the foam surrounds redone. I don't know if the ferro fluid dries out on these guys or not. Uh, I, I didn't really check any forums, but that is always a possibility. These seem to be just in good shape for that, as well as the crossovers in them. I, I did see there's some mods you can do. You know, These, as far as I know, are all stock except for the refoaming on the woofer. But to me, there would be no reason to be replacing capacitors on them for the fear that they're old and they're going bad. I just didn't see that in the data. So. That is kind of my take on the realistic Mach 2 loudspeakers. I would love to hear your 
uh, comments in the area below. And once again, there is a section in the description with my email address if you have you know, questions about the channel or something not related to this video that you would like an answer to. If I get enough questions, I will have a video where I answer those questions. It might be kind of fun. And other than that, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you like the video, you know, click the like, um, thumbs up kind of thing. And until next time, have a great day or night.